Okay, so first things first, we're going to go in a very broad overview and see how the web works. And this will give us some fundamental knowledge, which will help us understand how we build applications. Okay. Okay. So let's get right to it. Well, first of all, to understand how the web works, it's interesting to think about how the internet works. Okay. So the web is built on top of the internet. So how does the internet work or what is the internet? Well, basically the internet is a wire. Okay. It's nothing more than a wire. And I've represented it with a big fat line here in the middle of my screen. And this wire basically connects all over the world. So it's a wire that runs, or it's not one wire, it's many wires that run all around the world. They even go undersea and connect continents. And the internet is basically this wire and a bunch of computers connected to this wire. Here we see smaller wires connecting our personal computer, for example, to this big fat wire, which is the internet. Okay, so here we have uh, on this bottom left hand side, our personal computer, and then we have some different servers, this being Google and this being Bing, for example. And whenever we see a connection of one of these servers or computers into this internet wire, we see this box here. Okay, this box is a router. And what a router does is it directs messages to the appropriate destination. So if we were to, for example, try to access google.com, well, what will in fact happen is that we are, we are sending out information and these routers will help us reach our destination. Okay. So if I were to go to google.com, then this router, which could possibly be the router inside our home or inside our office would direct me in this direction. And then this router would tell me that now I have to go up here and this by, by this way, I will access google.com. If I were to access Bing, for example, then again, this router will, would tell me to go this direction. And then I would encounter this router and this router would tell me I, I still need to go forward to this router. And then this router would tell me that I have to go down here to access Bing.com. Okay. And all of this is possible thanks to these IP addresses. Okay. A IP address is essentially the exact same thing as our home address. So imagine you want to, you're here and you want to go to your friend's house. Well, you need to know where they live and you need to know their address to reach that location. Well, the exact same thing happens in the internet because what we're doing is we're sending up packets of information and we want to receive packets of information and to send and receive packets. It's just like a post office, right? We need to know which address we're sending to and we want to, and the, the receiver will then send out information back to us and they need to know our address. So these IP addresses are, are, are what makes the internet possible because we know where we need to send and receive data. And thanks to these IP addresses, the routers also know how, where to direct the, the message. Okay. So if I, if I'm trying to go to google.com, which has this IP address here, well, th this router knows it needs to send it this direction instead of left. So sending it to the left, it may also reach its destination because it would go somewhere else and come back through here and go up here. But the thing is, routers tend to always choose the shortest path. So they know the location of other routers. And so they, they tend to choose the shortest path by knowing the IP address. What's also happening behind the scenes is that when, whenever we type in, for example, google.com into our browser, well, google.com is simply a domain name and behind this do domain name lives this IP address. Okay. So machines talk IP addresses. They don't talk www.google.com. We, we have invented domain names because it's much easier to remember google.com instead of 173.194.45.201. Okay. This is very hard to remember. So it's much easier to remember a name. That's why we invented domain names and domain names are nothing other than a mapping of a name to a IP address. So what's happening behind the scenes when, when we try to access google.com is that we are sending out that request to out to the internet. And usually it, it goes through our internet service provider. And that internet service provider is maybe has some servers that store the mappings 
of google.com to its IP address. So like that, we know how to resolve google.com to its IP address. And from there, from there onwards, the routers or the routers can actually direct that packet of information to google.com because we have resolved the domain name to its IP address, okay? So let's see how this works. I type in google.com to my browser. And what the browser does is it goes ahead and, and sends a request to google.com. So we are re requesting information from google.com. And then when Google receives our requests, the code that lives on Google and it dictates what Google must do with that request goes ahead and processes that request and then, and then returns a response. So when Google figures out or when the code living on, on Google servers figures out what it needs to do with the request and figures out what it needs to return back to our client, it goes ahead and responds back with a response, okay? So the server or the host sends back a response to our client, and usually this is HTML, which then our browser picks up and interprets that HTML, and then prints us on our screen the graphical representation of that HTML, okay? We're going to see this in just a second in the next video. But for the time being, I just want to explain the very important concept of requests and responses because that's what we're going to be dealing 99% throughout this course, okay? So 99% of the time in this course, we're going to be uh, dedicated into treating or receiving re requests and programming some code on our server that will figure out what to do and what to return back to our client and actually respond back with that response, okay? We will be coding some application logic which will figure out what to do with the request and, and give back a response, okay? That's essentially what servers do all of the time.